Hello, my name is Chris Abikas. I'm the lead service technician here at Hydolf North America. Today I'll be showing you how to set up and install your HiVap industrial unit. One of the first things you'll notice when you unpack your HiVap industrial unit is these shipping poles. Uh, those are primarily used to lift the unit up out of the crate and to put onto the base cart. Uh, once you have the unit set on the base cart, you'll notice that there's screws. Just remove those screws and the poles will slide right out. Okay, so step one in the setup process is to get your tools ready. Uh, a box cutter is helpful. Uh, you will need three different Torx drives, a T10, a T15, and a T20. Uh, also, a pair of side cutters would come in handy. You will also need a five and a half millimeter socket and also a tubing cutter. All right, for step two, we're going to be installing the condensate collection cabinets. And we have a panel that goes up on the front that has a clear glass so you can see in. And the solid panel will be going on the rear of the unit. First thing you're going to want to do is install the back panel. Uh, we're going to take our five millimeter socket, loosen up these screws. And while you're doing that, you may also want to remove the two that are on the front panel as well. Next, we're going to remove these five screws right here, and they are a size T15. After you remove those five screws on the side, you're going to want to come around to the back of the unit. And there are three screws here that we need to remove. One on the bottom, one on the middle, and then one on the top here in between the uh, uh, manifold in the back here. Once you remove the three screws on this back panel, you're going to want to take your back cabinet panel. You'll notice that there's a little slot down here. It rides right on the lip of this back panel. So line that up, get that in place. Line your screws on the top for the mantle. And then you'll take your little five millimeter nut, screw that in on the center screw. And then we'll complete installing the rest of the hardware. And the top one is always the trickiest because now we're going through three panels. So you want to make sure you get all the holes properly aligned to get that screw caught. Once you install those three screws, you want to get the remaining five and a half millimeter nuts installed. Once you get them on with your hand, take your five and a half millimeter socket and then tighten those screws down. I just typically get them tight. If you over tighten them, you will, you will strip the screw uh, or possibly break off the threads. After you install your three nuts on the top to secure the back panel in place, you're going to want to grab your T20 Torx drive and screw the bracket into the side of the unit. Once we get the back panel installed, then we're going to install the front panel. Just align the two screws on the panel. Once you align and get your panel in place, take the five millimeter, five and a half millimeter nuts, get those started. Once you get those two five and a half millimeter nuts in place and your door is just hanging, next we're going to want to finish installing the screws uh, to connect the cabinet door to the side of the unit. Uh, you will have to push up on the bottom here in order to align the screw holes. 
This part will be easier if you have uh, somebody in the lab to be able to give you a hand. Alright, so we're going to do step three now, which is uh, installing the condenser housing. Uh, you will have a couple components in here that are going to be tied down with the little tie straps. That's where the side cutters come into play. Uh, you will have six of these spacers. Um, two of them are not going to be used because of our steam tube. I will talk about that as we go on. Um, you will have a vacuum line and then there's also a connector for the vacuum sensor. Uh, so you will have to clip those as well. Once you have that all taken care of, you're going to want to grab your T25 Torx and you'll notice five screws on the mantle. Just remove those five screws for now. These are the screws that will be holding the condenser housing in place. Uh, next, we're going to want to remove the retaining collar. So with that, you'll have this little threaded collar and then also a split ring insert. And then we have one other little retaining screw uh, between our sensor connectors right here. This is a T10. Our next step is going to be lifting up the, the cabinet and placing it on the mantle. Uh, one person can do it. If you feel more comfortable, I would advise getting uh, somebody else to give you a hand getting this up. It's not super heavy, it's just kind of awkward. So grab it by the base. Get it placed in position. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that your vacuum line and your vacuum sensor uh, both come out the back and you're not pinching them. And then we wanna slide it into position to align our screw holes in the cabinet with the screw holes on the mantle. Once you have everything in position, we'll start screwing the, the cabinet into place. So we get your five T25 uh, Torx screws and just start putting them in by hand. There's your five screws, one, two, three, four, five. Start them by hand. Make the final screw down a lot easier. And then we're going to install our little T10 retaining screw. Step four, we're going to start installing the glassware. Uh, we're going to start with our vapor tube itself and then the sandwich seal. Take your vapor tube, slide it in. Take your sandwich seal and place that right on top of the vapor tube. Once you have your vapor tube installed and the sandwich seal in place, you're gonna to wanna to grab your A distributor and you're gonna to need to install your holding clamp. So slide your metal piece on first. Take your split ring. The thinner side is gonna be going towards the threading. Open it up, slide it over the top, and you're in place. Once you have your coupling in place, you want your feed tube to slide in through the vapor tube. Press your A distributor up against that sandwich seal and start getting your coupling caught. Get in there nice and tight and just give it a little bit of a turn to snug it down. Once you have your distributor in place, your A distributor in place, grab your steam tube and a KS64 uh, clamp. And we're gonna position this right above the A distributor. Once the, the uh, steam tube is in place, grab your KS64. You'll notice it's spring loaded. In order to get this on the, on the glassware, just press down, slide it right over, give those screws a little turn, and you're good. Okay, after we install the steam tube, our next is uh, the R condenser. Uh, this is the R condenser, and you notice that this port right here 
is offset 180 degrees from your water supply lines. And this condenser will be going into the back of the cabinet. Uh, what you do want to do is take your spacers and you want to do rubber side up on the top and then uh, rubber side down on the bottom. And then with your water line connections, you want those going towards the back left corner. Take your condenser, get it caught in the bracket, lift that bracket up and just bring it right into place. After we get our R condenser in place, we wanna get our T auto uh, condenser in place. Now the difference between the R condenser and the T auto is that this port right here is offset 90 degrees from your water supply uh, ports. And when we install this one again, we want metal side down. And then on the bottom, we want uh, metal side up. And you want your two water connections to go towards the back left corner. And again, we slide it up through the bracket, lower it into place, and just make sure that top bracket comes down along with it. Once you have your condensers in place, we want to next install our vacuum cap. It's this little cap with a little elephant trunk on it, and grab your KS64 spring clamp. Take your vacuum cap, stick it on top of the back condenser, Grab your KS64 clamp, press down, get it caught. And then from here, we're gonna install our vacuum tubing. So once you have your tubing in place, you're gonna wanna tighten down this gray cap and that'll hold the tubing in place on the vacuum cap. Once we have the vacuum cap installed, you're gonna to wanna to install the U-tube. Prior to putting this in place, you're gonna to wanna to remove this gray cap this is your vapor temperature sensor. This is how the whole piece comes with the cap, compression fitting, cord. You're gonna to wanna to slide your, va your vapor temperature sensor right into this port here. And then we're gonna install the U-tube on the very top. Once you have your vapor temperature sensor in place, we're gonna to wanna to position our U-tube, uh, connecting the steam tube to the condenser on the left side. Now when you get your steam tube, or when you get the U-tube in place, it will be a little shorter on this side here. We will have to raise that condenser, but first we wanna get our U-tube clamped to the steam tube. Once we have the U-tube in place, let's clamp down the side of the shorter side of the U-tube to the condenser. And then we can get our KS64 caught on the other side by the steam tube. Once we get our U-tube installed, we next want to install the Y-joint. That'll be going on the bottom of the condensers here to essentially connect both condensers. So get this piece in place, slide it in connecting the condensers. Take your KS64 spring-loaded clamp. Get that clamp in position. And next we're going to want to use the last of our KS64 clamps to get the back condenser connected to the Y joint. Once we have that in position, we're gonna to wanna to lift up the back condenser so that our Y joint is nice and level. To get our back condenser level, we wanna loosen up this wing nut, press up, get up about maybe an inch or so, tighten it down, and we should be in place. After we get our Y joint in place, the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is install our liquid lines. Uh, you will receive a roll of black tubing like this uh, with your unit. This is strictly for the liquid lines. You will also receive a roll of clear tubing. That's going to be for the vacuum lines. So right here we have our water manifold. This is where we're going to be plumbing our lines in. So you'll notice that it says water condenser 1, water condenser 2, um, both in and return. Uh, so what we're going to want to do is start with the lower water condenser one, that's our initial supply, and we will be plumbing from here up to the very top of our back condenser. Now to install your liquid line, you will want to remove the hose barb from the top of your condensers. Actually take all four of the hose barbs off because we will be using those. Uh, and the best way to get this cap started is to grab a little screwdriver, 
And then uh, if you have a heat gun, warm this up and it'll slide on nice and easy. You will want to get the tubing up beyond this last little rib right here. Once you have your hose barb in place, you're going to want to run your tubing behind the Y joint up to the top and get the back condenser connected. So next we're going to want to measure out our length of tubing and where we're going to want to connect it to is water condenser one on the bottom. So what I typically do is I'll bring it over to water condenser one and then go about an inch or two beyond the water manifold, grab your tubing cutter, cut the tubing, install your line, and now our first supply line is in place. Next we're going to want to install the return line that's going to be going to the top of our side condenser. Again the same thing, use a little screwdriver, Get your tubing up to that last rib on that hose barb. Run the tubing behind the Y joint. Connect it to the top of the condenser. And then we're going to want to measure and cut on return line condenser one. So once we have our side top condenser return line connected. We're going to want to re we're going to want to connect the tubing to water condenser 1 with the arrow pointing towards the manifold. And again, just measure the line to that port and cut about an inch or two beyond that with your tubing cutter. Okay. Now when you get both of these lines connected, the next thing you're going to want to do is shut these valves off. Uh, these are just secondary valves that would go down to a cold trap on the vacuum pump. So in order to do that, just shut these off. If we didn't do that, we would have coolant when we start up the chiller spitting out and making a mess all over the lab. So next, now we're going to connect both of our condensers. We have our supply hooked in. We also have a return, but we don't have a path to connect both condensers right now. So. With that being said, cut off about a foot of the black tubing. Take your remaining two hose barbs, connect them to this little loop. And these two will be connected on the bottom connections of the condensers. Now to connect your little loop here, you may want to remove your product feed valve. So just unscrew this coupling, remove the entire tube, and it's gonna make life a little bit easier getting back to your uh, tube connectors. Okay, once you get that tubing connected, just slide our product feed right back into place. And just screw that into place. Next, after we install our liquid lines, we want to install our receiving cassettes. Before we install our receiving cassette, what we're going to want to do is spread out our brackets a little bit further. So what you do is just loosen up the screw on either end, slide the front bracket towards the front of the machine, tighten down your screws, And then with the back bracket, we are going to slide this towards the back of the machine. <laughs> this will better help us install our H distributor, which will be our last piece of glass we're going in. Okay, so what we're going to do now is slide our receiving cassette onto the bracket. Essentially all this does is just rest right on top of the bracket. So it slides in. When we're at this point here, we will want to drop these down. So just loosen the wing nut, allow the flask to drop all the way to the bottom. 
And that'll set us up for installing our H distributor. All right, so the final step for installing our glassware is installing the H distributor. Uh, so with that, you're gonna need the H distributor, and then you'll have three of these KS40 clamps. So next, we're gonna take our H distributor, and we're gonna to wanna to connect the top piece of this H distributor to our Y joint using our KS40 clamp. Get that in position. Get the clamp in place, screw down that little screw. So that'll hold this glassware in place so we could align our collection vessels into, into position. Okay, so now we wanna get our collection vessels into position. So as you remember earlier, we had these in the lowered position. Now we wanna bring it, grab it by the bar, bring your glass into position, lock the wing nut, take your KS40 clamp, get that in position, and then do the exact same for the back collection vessel. And that completes the installation of our glassware. Our next step is gonna be installing the vacuum pump. So with the vacuum pump, you obviously you get the vacuum pump itself. You'll get two receiving flasks and then two NS35 connectors. In one of the receiving flasks, you will find uh, some fittings that are inside the flask itself. We will get those out and actually attach them to the cold trap on the vacuum pump. Okay, the first thing we wanna do when we have our vacuum pump in position is adjust this little dial that's right below the power switch. What this does right now, this, this comes set at 240 volts and we wanna change that to 120. So basically all you do is get yourself a little screwdriver, put it in the slot, you're gonna do about a quarter turn and you'll feel it click into place. And you're gonna do about a quarter turn counterclockwise and that'll put you into 120. Okay, after adjusting our voltage, we wanna get our collection flasks in place. Let's take your NS35, clamp that in position. Here are the round bottom that'll have some of the fittings in there. We'll take those out. Install the second flask. Remove this red cap. And now we're gonna want this gray cap with the black hose barb. That is gonna go right where that red cap was at. And then your remaining connections go onto the back of the, on the, back of the cold finger. As I mentioned earlier, uh, this is the clear tubing that will be in the same pack with the black tubing. Uh, this tubing is strictly used for uh, the vacuum. So in order to connect the vacuum tubing, you're going to want to run the tubing underneath the vacuum. Connect this to the black hose barb. And then we're going to connect this to the back of the unit by the vacuum valve. So our other end of the vacuum tubing is going to be going right to this white piece right here, this white uh, hose barb. It's going to be labeled as vacuum in. So get your tubing cutter, cut your tube. And just slide that tubing right onto the hose barb. And now you have your vacuum all hooked up. So step six, we're going to be hooking up the vacuum sensor our vacuum line. And then if you'd like, you could also hook up the auto water feed fe feature. All right. So basically your two lines coming out of the back of the column here. Uh, this is your vacuum sensor. I usually run it underneath those other connectors. Essentially plug it in and screw it in. Okay. After you connect your vacuum sensor, you're going to want to connect your vacuum line. So remove your cap and ferrule. Put that over the tube. Slide the tube into position. Screw your cap in place. And now your vacuum line is all hooked up. 
Okay, so back here we have our auto water feed feature. Uh, basically, if you have a supply line in your lab um, or if you has a, have a reservoir that has a pump on it, you could hook a line up to this valve here and as the water level in the heating bath goes down, uh, this will trigger the valve to open up and allow water to flow in to keep your heating bath filled at its proper level. Okay. Right next to that we have, this is where our ventilation valve is at um, and we do have the ability to remove this filter and install inert gas uh, if you don't want any just regular air in your lab to be hitting any of your product inside the glassware. So we're finally going to install our 20 liter uh, evaporation flask. With that you will need this white PTFE adapter and then this is going to be your uh, vapor tube seal and uh, it's already, it should already be on this black tool, okay? As you can see I currently have our 20 liter uh, evaporation flask resting in our flask supports. Now in order to get our vapor tube seal and PTFE adapter in place, we will need to remove the 20 liter flask. Next, what you're going to want to do is grab your vapor tube seal and you'll notice that it says condenser side. So this will go in towards the condensers. What you want to do is take your feed tube, pop it through the donut hole, align your vapor tube seal tool and slide your vapor tube seal onto the vapor tube. Next, you're going to take your PTFE adapter. You'll notice that there's grooves in here. You want to align and also open up your collar, but you want to coordinate the bigger tab with the bigger slot, smaller tab with the smaller slot. Once you get that PTFE adapter in place, <clears throat> Give it a quarter turn counterclockwise. And at this point, we can install our evaporation flask. What I'm doing right now is adjusting the tension on our collar because it would not close. There you go. Okay, so step seven, I'm gonna uh, show you how we're going to remove the evaporation flask. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is while the unit's off uh, is align your button here on the collar with the bottom of this little warning sticker. That'll get you in a rough area. From that point, pull this little locking knob out and just even if it's step, if it sticks, you're good. It's spring loaded at this point, so just rotate the flask back and forth until it locks into place. And then at this point, we'll be able to open the collar. So push down on this button, lift the handle all the way up. With your other hand, rotate that collar down and we'll be able to slide the flask out of place. So step eight, I'm gonna go over some instructions for maintaining the collar. All right, so with that, basically what you wanna do is open up your collar and remove your 20 liter flask. After you remove your flask, you're going to want to remove the PTFE adapter and the vapor tube seal. So with that, just grab a hold of the, the PTFE adapter, pull it straight out, and you'll have both of your uh, vapor tube seal and the PTFE adapter interlocked. Put that off to the side. Now what we're going to want to do is eventually remove this spring here, and there's three guides. And that's going to be so we could uh, remove and clean any residual oil or gunk that might get caught up in these guides and hinder the operation of opening and closing the collar. So with that, just pull up on the spring. Your guides will just be falling out. Some are easy to pry out, others not so much. But these came out nicely for us. So once we have these three components out, I would just soak them in ethanol or acetone, whatever solvent you could use for cleaning. And then um, we will reinstall these. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this video on how to install and set up your HiVap industrial unit. Um, if you have any questions regarding any of the setup processes or anything along those lines, feel free to give me a call or email me and I will respond to you as soon as I can.